And one of my favorite passages of scripture is found in Nehemiah chapter 8. I want to read it for you in just a minute, but just again, welcome to Wednesdays in the Word. I'm Dr. Stan, and uh, just so glad that you can join me today as I spend a little time in God's Word, sharing some concepts, some thoughts that I hope will be a blessing. If you want to learn more about uh, our ministry, it's uh, Dr. Stan. Uh, .org. You can go to booksbyvision, uh, also .org, or vision.edu. So in Nehemiah chapter 8, uh, I want to start with uh, verse 4. It says, And Ezra the scribe stood at a wooden podium, which they had uh, made for that purpose. And there was a bunch of other folks there with him, and it goes on to talk about that. Verse 5 says, And Ezra opened the book, in sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people, and when he opened it, all the people stood up. Wouldn't that be nice if people stood up now at the reading of the word? Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, while lifting up their hands. Then they bowed low and worshipped the Lord with uh, their faces to the ground. And again, a bunch of other people are described there as they, they attentively listened to the law of the Lord. And then they read from the book, from the law of God, translating to give the sense so they understood the reading. <clears throat> then Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people were weeping when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go eat of the fat, drink of the sweet, and send portions to him who has nothing prepared, for this day is holy to our Lord. Do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. <clears throat> so the Levites calmed all the people, saying, Be still, for the day is holy. Do not be grieved. And all the people went away to eat, to drink, to send portions, and to celebrate a great festival, because they understood the words which had been made known to them. Many, many years ago, and as a, my friend Lee Stutzman likes to say, I, from a planet long, far, far away. Anyway, uh, I, you know, spent a time with my one of my daughters and my eldest daughter actually, and she was struggling in some class in school. Like I can't remember what it was, but. Uh, she described her struggle as though she was in a fog. She just couldn't quite see things clearly. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, you know, trying to be a good dad, I was thinking of maybe some words of wisdom I might be able to give her. Uh, but again, she was just really struggling. I think it might have been, you know, algebra she was struggling with because I believe with all my heart that algebra is a demon. But anyway. Uh, she was struggling with that or something, and I, I remember telling her that, that, listen, one of these days, if you just stay with it, if you don't quit, if you stay focused on what you're doing, eventually you're going to come out of the fog and everything is going to be clear. Just trust God and trust the process. You're going to get there. Well, uh, you know, a couple weeks, three weeks later, I remember her coming up to me just full of joy and full of laughter, saying simply to me, Dad, the fog lifted. You know, a lot of people nowadays are wondering, is this fog of all the, you know, the, the pandemic and, and all of the ramifications, is this thing ever going to lift? And the answer, of course, is of course it is, I hope. Uh, someday, maybe, I'll guarantee that someday something good is going to happen and this is going to change. I hope that's helpful. Probably not that much. Well, you know, the, the children of Israel, I wonder how they were when they were in their time of captivity. You know, this passage, Ezra and Nehemiah together, you know, they, they were you know, started out their life in Babylon, a place they didn't want to be. They were in a time of captivity. They were under bondage. Now, they were allowed a certain semblance of, you know, freedom and worship, etc. But by and large, everything that they did was governed by the worldview of the Babylonians. They didn't want to be there. They longed to get back to Israel, to their beloved homeland. Well, 
you know, it had been a long time. Now, and I think probably both of them were very cognizant of the fact that years before, Jeremiah had given a prophetic word that said, in 70 years, you'll come out and you'll go back. Well, you know, even though there was that word given, it wasn't specifically to Nehemiah or to Ezra, saying that you guys are going to be a part of that. But I'm sure as all of the people of God that were in captivity believed, maybe it could be them. So we know in Ezra chapter 7, verse 10, it says, Ezra set his heart to study the law and practice it and teach it in all of Israel. He prepared himself with a vision that just possibly, perhaps, he'd have the opportunity to teach in Israel. We see here in the passage we read, he got that opportunity by the grace of God. We know a bit about Nehemiah. I mean, he was a government worker. He was, he was on government payroll. Probably had good health benefits, etc. But anyway, he was there and positioned strategically in just the right place at the right time. And, and yet, not where he wanted to be. We know the story. He heard about the destruction in Israel. He wept bitterly before the Lord. He cried out to God. He, he took a risk. He went before the king. And the king gave him favor. And he was given the opportunity to go back. And we know there was troubles there. There were opposition, etc. But he was, again, in the right place at the right time. Well, I was thinking about that and this passage of Scripture, especially in light of our present circumstances. And, 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 and here's some thoughts that came to mind. Number one, it's interesting, in verse 9 it says, that Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest, uh, and scribe, and the Levite. It was all of them coming together that made the difference. You know, one of the things that seems to be happening in a lot of places is there's a lot of division, a lot of conflict, backbiting, even amongst spiritual leaders. But, you know, that is certainly not the will of God. Jesus' prayer, his high priestly prayer, prayer is that we would be one. And in, in one sense, we all are one. We're one in the Spirit. We have the same Holy Spirit living within us. But, you know, in terms of one in purpose, one in focus, I mean, this is not a time to be dividing against each, each other, but it's a time for us to come together in prayer and in strategy. And so we know that it took all three, all these spiritual leaders coming together to be able to proclaim the good news that they had to share. Uh, both were born again in captivity, but even there, they had a promise. And can I tell you, we have a promise from God. We know that he will never, 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 never leave us nor forsake us. We know beyond shadow of a doubt that the kingdom of God will forever be advancing because Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Well, be that reality. May that be the reality of our heart. We recognize, we know, yes, troubles come, difficulties, people come in opposition. There's all kinds of, of folks that do not want to see the church come forth in all of its grace and power and glory. Yet it's going to happen, and we need to be a part of it. I, I for one, just believe the promise of God that we're getting ready for the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit that we've ever experienced, that the promises of God are going to be fulfilled in our generation. Now, I'm not worried about it if it doesn't, but I'm believing God for that. And I hope you are as well. And even though they're, you know, the problems that they had were caused because of sin. I mean, let's face it, the the folks during G uh, Jeremiah's day, I mean, they tried to kill him. Uh, they didn't want to hear the prophets. They didn't want to believe the reality of the day, that there were troubles, there were problems. They were putting their faith and trust in other nations. I mean, you know, it was a mess. And they were still steeped in idolatry. I mean, that was the cause for the captivity. I mean, that's true. That's real. And th there may be certain aspects of the reason why we're going through what we are now because of sin, whatever the cause and who are the, whoever the cause of it there, that there is. But here's the fact. God is bringing us out. He's given us a promise. We're going to see better days. We're coming out of the fog by His grace. Nehemiah believed it. Ezra believed it. They prepared themselves for the day when it would come. And we, as God's people, need to continue to do the same. In bondage, they looked for open doors. In their time of trouble, they didn't sit around 
and simply, you know, play with the lint in their navel. They spent time preparing themselves. And when they had the opportunity, when they came out and were given the opportunity to minister as God gave them blessing to do, they preached the word and the walls were built and the temple was restored and worship emerged and the teaching of the word came forth in power. <clears throat> now it's always interesting to see how people respond when God moves. I mean, look, I believe there's going to come a time in the not too distant future when we're going to look at the COVID virus and say, man, that was bad. Thank God it's over. I think we're going to look at things that are happening in our country and we're going to say, well, it was bad, but thank God we got through it. And we don't know. It may get worse before it gets better. better. It may get much worse before it gets better, but we know one thing, the better is coming. And yet so often the people of God, they don't know how to respond. Here they, they were weeping. They heard the word. Now maybe all they heard was the negativity, the shame, the guilt, because you haven't been doing what you need to be doing. You haven't lived according to the letter of the law, which was true in their case. I mean, even today, there are folks that are so sin conscious and so sin focused. They beat themselves up over every mistake they make or that anybody else makes. I mean, the church is often known for what we're against, not for what we're for. But Nehemiah and Ezra, they weren't looking at who caused the problem. They were looking at who has given us the promise. And that's the Lord. He's given us the promise. And therefore, even in the midst of our circumstances, kind of like Paul and Silas in prison, when you got nothing else to do, sing. You got nothing else to do, give the Lord praise. You got nothing else to do, begin to pray and give God thanks because he's, he's considered us worthy even to suffer for his name's sake. Because it's in the middle of the thanksgiving, it's in the middle of the praise, it's in the middle of the recognition that God is in the middle of this that he begins to break out in his power for his greater purposes that he uses through his people. So I just want to share just these few points with you. You know, when God brings victory, he brings us out of darkness. He brings us into greater light. So it's not time for us to be weeping and moaning and groaning and complaining about our horrible, horrible circumstances. Nobody knows the troubles I've seen. And frankly, you know, most people don't really care. It's not the time to weep. It's time to celebrate. We're not singing, I'm going to see a victory. We're singing, I'm living in his victory. Because the battle is not, doesn't just belong to the Lord. The battle has been won by the Lord. We live in the finished work of Christ. We live in the promises of the Lord. We live and move and have our very existence in him. It's time to celebrate. And so on this Wednesday, may God bless you as you consider your circumstances a bit. But consider this. Jesus is Lord. The kingdom of God is advancing. Life is good because God is good and his goodness lives within us. Until next Wednesday, may God bless you. I'm Dr. Stan. We'll see you later.